Uh, in abbreviated form, we have Senator Josh Becker, who represents uh, District 13, uh, which is basically all or most of Santa Mateo County and then northern Santa Clara County. Um, Josh has been, uh, as first day in the Senate, has been a leader in uh, clean energy and uh, building and a lot of future forward-looking um, uh, work. and. Uh, um, so uh, we'd like to have him uh, talk about the legislative year, which is a very productive year uh, regarding housing um, and, uh, and actually some things with the grid. And uh, so I'd like to have him talk about some of his bills uh, and then some of um, the other bills that came out of the legislature and their impact. And then hopefully we'll get a look at uh, next year's legislative priorities and and the budget season next year, uh, especially with an eye towards uh, making sure that transit, public transit is kept whole. So with that, I give you Senator Josh Becker. Thank you, Dan. It's good to see you as always. Yeah, it was a big, big year. Uh, everything from uh, building, from building housing um, to making sure that housing is green and um, to existing building stock, 80% of the buildings uh, that will exist in 2045 have already been built. So how do we uh, green those existing buildings, um, which is uh, our second largest source of emissions? Um, and then everything to transmission and how do we actually build transmission and supply the, the very wonky topics of moving energy uh, across uh, this state. So, um, you know, we think about climate, we don't often think about building, but it's about sustainable cities it's about transit and it's about actually building the clean energy infrastructure now that we're going to need, whether it's renewable energy or whether it's, again, transmission to to move that around. So do you want me to just go in and talk about some of the bills? Yes, please. Yeah. Well, I'm happy to to do that. And um, I'll start with a couple of things. I mentioned the Building Energy Savings Act. I mean, this is uh, this was SB 48. So this is really taking the evidence-based best practice across the country now of building performance standards saying, uh, and because I run the budget, I was able to get 10 million on the budget for benchmarking existing buildings so we can see uh, which what a building um, energy profile should be in a certain parts of the state. And then we can set standards and make sure that everybody has to get there over a period of years or face fines, but we give them lots of uh, time and resources to do that. And this bill will enable that kind of building performance standard, right? So that's one critical thing. We talk about space for solar, right? How are we actually going to build the renewable energy that we need? Right now, we're building it mostly in the desert, and then we need lots and lots of transmission lines to uh, get it where it needs to be. So the question is, how can we take advantage of uh, one of the things that was really underutilized that we found out in my research was space along highways, um, all this part that we already own, we can build solar, we can build transmission, we can build, um, you know, and in three counties alone in Southern California, they found that we could build three gigawatts of uh, solar just there. So we had a bill around that originally started out looking at rooftops uh, and canopies. Um, so the bill also included solar canopies for all the, uh, uh, the hundreds of thousands of square miles of parking lots that we have. As you know, France just mandated canopies. We tried to do it with incentives, and we had to take that part out, and we'll keep working on that um, for next year. But those were all really and That's SB 49. Yes, SB 49 um, was that bill that uh, that we passed. Um, and, you know, none of this, you know, in terms of reaching our clean energy goals, um, we have a lot of people that were either uh, personally building clean energy infrastructure and then waiting uh, months and months, if not a year or more, for to get connected by PG E to the grid or charging infrastructure. You know, we have massive policies in place. For example, by January of next year, you can only buy a zero emission truck if you're a, a fleet of a certain size. Well, how are we going to charge all those trucks? We need massive charging infrastructure. And it took a year and a half in my district to get large scale charging infrastructure in place. So passed a bill, SB 4010, that was the workforce piece. It was the uh, accountability piece and also the resources specifically focused in that area. And that's why people are really excited about that, to take that across the country. Um, and uh, that was SB 410. So 
a, a lot of really very specific things, a lot on housing as well. And you and I were talking about that SB4, uh, for example, which is yes in God's backyard, really freeing up uh, many, many, many parcels across cities that are owned by the churches, synagogues, or nonprofits, actually. And uh, in these cases, I've spent many times with these congregations. Uh, sometimes the population uh, is going down of people who attend them, but also an older population now that they're looking to where, where can we house them? And if they can also turn this land they have into a revenue stream, that's fantastic in a state where land is our most uh, precious resource and gaining items, making sure more of that um, uh, more of that project doesn't end up in parking. That was another piece uh, that we'd done in the previous year, um, working with Laura Friedman. So, um, you know, a lot of pieces that were done on on both uh, of those fronts. I have a lot more Columbus stuff we could talk about, but uh, I'll stop there. What else do you want me to cover? Well, um, yes, and actually, uh, uh, it's, it's really just even with your bills, 48, 49, 410, 341, um, it, it is this, uh, uh, you mentioned the infrastructure, and I think uh, anybody that looks into, uh, you know, really ramping up solar, really ramping up sleep, and everything starts looking at, well, uh, yeah, the interconnections. Wait a minute. Uh, you know, where are the high voltage engineers, uh, electricians, and stuff? Um, why are they all retired? And uh, uh, you know, all kinds of things like that. Uh, and uh, so, you, I, I have to say that uh, you've been doing some really great work on that, looking ahead. And you know, when good, when government works well, they are looking. People in government are looking further out ahead, you know, to tackle the next problems before they get to the like totally intractable problems. So, so uh, kudos for that, for being both, uh, um, you know, you have your 15 minutes, your show horse and a workhorse all in one. And uh, so, um, you know, really uh, appreciated that as far as the, as far as the grid, because that is going to be a big thing. And, and we've had some, uh, um, even uh, Steve Jordan earlier today, this is this is taped, so we're faking it, but, uh, you know, he had a whole thing on uh, uh, data center interconnection and, and uh, you know, with, uh, and, and AI's impact on data centers and the power draws on that. But uh, also, uh, you know, right now, the five-year wait that Santa Clara is telling people that if they want 50 megawatts of power for a new data center, uh, see them in five years. So, um, yeah, there's some issues to definitely deal with, and I appreciate your- Well, it's a big uh, issue in terms of, them. yeah, the the companies that were started here, um, uh, were born here, and end up doing manufacturing elsewhere because there's no power. Um, I'm talking to a company right now that's deciding that just like, they don't, there's not enough power here to get them hooked up, and we wonder why do they move uh, elsewhere? So, yeah, there's there's a, um, a a lot that we have to do, um, but um, you know I think what we've shown is that there is some some hope, some movement. Uh, we still have to see it reflected in the numbers now in the GHG emissions numbers. But too often people feel a despair in the face of um, climate, the impacts of climate change uh, around the world. People just feel. Uh, hopeless. And now we've shown that there's work we can do. I was actually just at the first um, first commercial plant in the country to remove, not carbon capture, carbon removal, remove and store uh, CO2. Uh, that itself was optimistic and helpful. So, and I've got a bill on that, SB mm -hmm. 308, to do, to do more of that. So there's a lot we have to do. Um, by the way, building materials, um, you know, I did the bill, my very first year building for a uh, bill for uh, low carbon uh, cement. And as you know, uh, concrete and cement alone are 7% of our world's carbon emissions um, because the process emissions from uh, from uh, making cement and then, uh, and then um, also it's energy intensive. So we got a lot of work to do, but it was a really big year on a lot of fronts and we're excited to move forward on housing um, and my role with the Bay Area Caucus now promoting transit, 
we were able to get five billion dollars for transit, get billions back in the budget after the governor had taken it out. So we're working on all of these things and um excited for you and your crew to to keep working with us and thank you. Uh, well, uh, thank you. So actually that segues uh, to, um, you know, kind of uh, the next next year and what, what do you see uh, of some of the larger themes? And then I also wanted that question uh, extending to the budget uh, uh, next year because, you know, there was obviously a, uh, a grab uh, in, in terms of uh, transit funding that you just alluded to. Yeah, just real quick to to sum up on that. Um, well, right now, my teams, we're looking at where, you know, we always do this every year. Where are we? Uh, where we've been? Where are we? Where do we need to go? And so we're looking at ideas for next year. Happy to hear any from um, folks that are watching this. Um, and then on the budget, same thing. We have to kind of wait to see where we're going to be. I know we're going to have another deficit, uh, unfortunately, mm -hmm. um, and um, which, you know, shows we're probably going to have to right size the budget over time. Um, but, you know, spending went way up actually during the pandemic as we had surpluses. So uh, it's an issue. And so we have to, for example, look at using our GGRF money a lot more effectively. That's the Greenhouse Gas Reduction Fund. So that's billions uh, that we control. So there's some stuff that's going to be going out from this big, um, the big, you know, $45 billion over five year a commitment that we made. Um, but in terms of new money, we have to really be working with GGRF money and other things that we can do. So happy to revisit that in the future. We'll see where the uh, financial projections leave us. Uh, yes, this is always uh, to be continued uh, um, discussion yeah. uh, point. Uh, last question. Uh, I think you had just come out of a, uh, a webinar on um, El Camino. Uh, and uh, one of the bills uh, I didn't really get to ask you too much about was the bill from last year, was the Buffy Wicks Bill, AB 2011, um, uh, with uh, developing housing and strip malls and things, which seems like it's a beautiful El Camino bill, um, but uh, uh, had a lot of other components to it, uh, you know, as well. But um, uh, anyway, I just wondered if you had any uh, um, anything coming out of your uh, El Camino webinar. Well, on that, you know, we're rezoning uh, El Camino up and down my district. I mean, uh, Santa, San Carlos just rezoned uh, two miles of El Camino to, I think, 200 units an acre, uh, um, at least 120 units an acre. So um, now the question is, how do we get this stuff built? And that's really what I'm working on. But also in El Camino, we really talked, you know, how can we get Caltrans to work more on complete streets, bike lanes? Mountain View is really ahead of the game. So this repaving, we're going to do a lot of great work in Mountain View around bike reliability, safety, and then we need to do that now up and down uh, the peninsula. So I think overall, we got some good timelines for some incredibly needed repairs, but also some long-term planning. Um, but we need to see more of that, more of the long-term planning going forward. Well, I'm optimistic that El Camino can be a grand boulevard. Yes, <laughs> it can be. Let's get some of this stuff yeah. built. I mean, now it's all there. You know, you know, Millbrae is another perfect example. It's all rezoned as high as they possibly can, uh, as dense as they possibly can. Uh, now we got to look at how do we actually get this stuff built? OK, well, we'll leave it at that. I really appreciate you working through the technical difficulties. And uh, um, uh, thanks uh, for appearing at uh, Build-A-Palooza. All right. Good to see you as always.